Cartoon Network in the early 2000s was perhaps the best time to be a kid watching the network. During this time, we got introduced to new and exciting content with different varieties to choose from. If you wanted comedy, shows like Ed and Eddie, Foster's Home, Billy and Mandy, Camp Flowers and more could do the trick. If you wanted action, shows like Samurai Jack, Teen Titans, Megas XLR, Benton and more could give the journal rush you needed. And don't even get me started on what you can find if you want to see a slice of life show where anything but normal stuff happens. This era also saw the run of the famous CN Real Bumpers, a set of commercials that saw a crossover of all the shows on the network. This was the closest we got to Infinity War and Endgame levels of epicness before Infinity War and Endgame, so that was fun. Cartoon Network during this time was also the perfect time to be a kid exploring new worlds in animation, a place to become creative, a place to start getting the passion to make shows. In fact, animators of today could have been inspired to break out of their shows and become the next generation of storytellers thanks to the shows that came out during this time. Cartoon Network was in a pretty good place when it came to the content and those who viewed it. But a series of events would lead to what will universally be known as the dark era for the network. Cable news viewers in this country were treated to hours of live coverage this afternoon as suspicious packages were discovered all over Boston. This guy's have it now uh, showing you some of the, uh, the episodes this afternoon where police went location by location with the bomb squad, squad to, to check out these uh, so-called magnetic uh, signs, lights. At least nine devices were found planted throughout the city in Boston in sensitive areas. Authorities say they look like circuit boards with wires hanging from them. On January 31st, 2007, the city of Boston was in a panic when it was thought to be a series of IEDs were found all around the city. As it turns out, there are actually LED lights of the Moon Knight characters on them. This was done by Boston artists Zebler and Sean as part of a guerrilla marketing campaign for the upcoming Adult Swim movie, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, colon, movie film for theaters. The entire city of Boston was angry at the stunt, which said the following consequences to occur. Zebler and Sean were arrested and charged in signing a panic with the devices, a sentence that would have sent them to prison for five years if convicted. They made bail there that day and appeared in a press conference where they were advised not to talk about anything on the case. It made for a fun watch. Haircuts in the 70s? Yeah, we, we really we feel, want to discuss the style we, of them. We feel it's really important because we think it's been a big inspiration on how people live their lives today um, and how they're going to live their lives in the future and how they're going to look at the past. Turner, the company that owns Cartoon Network and Adult Swim, paid out $2 million to Boston Homeland Security and what can be known as, we're so sorry, please don't sue us money. While this did save face for the company to avoid any further issues, local authorities didn't see it as enough, as Dan Comley, a district attorney from Massachusetts, said that the people who are responsible for this stunt are liable for the havoc that it caused. Some people saw humor in the situation. Most of it came from fans of Aqua Teen who mocked the people in charge for not knowing the difference between an IED and what was basically a night bright. Even the team behind Aqua Teen Hunger Force saw humor in all this, as an episode was produced to poke fun in the situation. But before it aired, Adult Swim pulled the plug to not further alienate the city, so another episode aired instead. It was seen as a lost episode for eight years until the rough cut of the episode with unfinished animation was leaked onto the internet. It's about on level as a usual Aqua Teen episode, but nonetheless, it's an interesting find. But the worst in all this came to the Cartoon Network president, Jim Staples. On February 9, 2007, Jim Staples released a statement to his employees that effective immediately he would be resigning as president of the network. He decided that he deeply regretted the negative publicity and expensive that was happening to the network as a result of the stunt and felt he needed to step down to the gravity situation that he caused. So, Cartoon Network as a whole was in a bad place because of this, and they needed guns to get themselves out of the hole they put themselves in and save face. And who would be the one to step out of the shadows and lead them out of this messy situation? While well, be Jim Staples' successor, Stuart Snyder. But who was he? Well, Stuart Snyder is an American businessman with a history of various forms of media. He worked with brands like Sinner, Feld, and even with the WWE, before becoming the senior vice president and general manager of the now defunct online gaming service GameTap. With an impressive resume like that, it made sense to make him the next in line running things. But you see, he was a progressive guy with big ideas that he felt would do good for the company. Some of these ideas were good, while others that we're going to see next weren't so much. It's 2009. Cartoon Network is currently on a winning streak with shows like Chowder, Benton, Alien Force, Blackjack, Clone Wars, and more. Cartoon Network has also started adapting to the times and has since started using the TV PG icon for the channel, which meant more riskier shows for the network. This worked in favor for the network and the acquisition of shows like Total Drama and 16. 
These shows first aired in Canada, where it's more lenient with mature content and children's shows. This helped bring in a new demographic of older children as opposed to within a producer pool thanks to the TVY7 or TVG ratings. This revelation saw potential for further success in Snyder's eyes, as he would begin the next phase of Cartoon Network. Starting on June 17, 2009, Cartoon Network introduced CN Row, a program block that would showcase nothing but live action shows of real kids doing real things. This block would air for one night a week as the final batch of shows that then lead to Adult Swim. They most consisted of reality based programming, but factored in on extreme concepts to attract a large audience. This included ghost hunting shows, survival shows, builder shows, commentary shows, and shows of adrenaline. Now, on the outside, this doesn't sound too bad of a plan considering Cartoon Network's competitors of Disney and Nickelodeon. Both of these channels have live action animated shows on their plate, so it would make sense to cash in and create alternatives to these programs and create something new and exciting for the channel. But this is where the problems would begin. The shows featured on the block were mostly reality based programming as opposed to original sitcoms or action shows the other networks were used to. But what also didn't help was the fact that all the shows were just kid appropriate ripoffs of other popular reality shows. Do what would happen? Mythbusters. Other Siders? Ghost Hunters, Survive This, Man vs. Wild, and Survivor Man, Brain Rush, Cash Cab, Bobby Says, Any Unfunny Commentary Show, Destroy Bill Destroy. Actually, I feel this is the only original show to come out of all this, so it's a gold star for originality. Look, to put it simply, you can go onto other channels and watch the shows that see on ripping off, and you'll have a better experience in the process. But other than that, the shows weren't really anything new that can grab attention, so there's already an issue there. Stuart Snyder's reasoning for producing live action shows was to provide new content that would draw kids in and get into the pool of Disney and Nick were in with the creation of live action shows. The problem with this is that Disney Nickelodeon prides itself on its content mostly because they have years of experience with this stuff. Both of these networks had experience with creating both live action and animated shows for some time, with great success mind you. Before seeing Row, all Cartoon Network was known for in terms of live action was for the movie reanimated and its spin-off out of Jimmy's head. And both of these are, and I'm trying to be a little nice here, complete dog shit. So that's not a good place for Cartoon Network to be in the sense of creating shows with real people instead of cartoons, which actually works with the third problem in all of this. Producing live action shows on the Cartoon Network. Just as plan already is confusing and it's going back on what the network is trying to do. Its original mission statement was to create a place where cartoons could be played 24-7. This is something they had pride over, even bringing it up during their pitch reel. With such a large cartoon library, only Turner is capable of launching an all two network. So no matter who else shows cartoons, Turner will become the undeniable cartoon source for children of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So doing this seems to be pushing back on the original mission statement and conforming to what other networks are doing. With all these issues plus a ton more, it's no wonder what happened next happened. To nobody's surprise, the launch of CN Road didn't go over so well. All the promises before took the key part in the vast majority of people hating the entire block when it came on. This block saw low ratings and negative reaction throughout its whole run of one whole year. While this wasn't bearable, there would be some benefit knowing that it was only one day out of the week, and of course during that time it wasn't on, we got cartoons to fall back on. But with the launch of CN Row, it also created the issue of no new cartoons being released as a result. And all this shows is that the higher ups really wanted CN Row to be a success, so they're willing to backtrack everything else to give CN Row a spotlight. And fortunately, it wasn't a success. A little over a year after the start of CN Row, all but two shows that came out were cancelled, citing low ratings, viewership, and reception. 
These two shows that were saved from early cancellation was do what would happen and destroy build destroy, both of which would make the seasons 3 and 4 with ultimately being canned. To this day, not all of the episodes in each series have been found entirely, and is currently lost media. And while I'm not saying it's not worth it, it's better to leave certain things in the past where they belong. Ever since the end of CN Row, Cartoon Network has continued with live action shows for some time, but the difference between these and CN Row is that these shows were actually good. Shows like Tower Prep and The Natural History were fun to watch because of the mystery aspect of the show, likable characters, and so much more. I was generally upset when they stopped both series, not just because it was good, but because I felt Cartoon Network finally found its footing doing live action shows. Cartoon Network also got their hands dirty with sports award shows with the Holly Game Awards, something I'm glad only lasted in a few years. An Incredible Crew was just something I didn't care for or didn't remember until I did research for the video, and I bet you didn't remember either. The only positive thing to come out of that was Shamik Moore being in dope. So what happened since? Well, for Cartoon Network, they mostly pulled themselves out of that era and have gone back to producing cartoons full time. This was best shown in the 2010s with the release of Metro Time, Regular Show, Gumball, Steven Universe, and loads more. Sure, there have been points to the main poor decisions, but none of them were on level previously seen, and quite frankly, I can live with it. Overall, I'm up more doors for original content to come out and be appreciated and encouraged in the process. Jim Staples, after resigning from Cartoon Network, went on to become the president of HGTV, international president of Scripps Network International, which in turn bought the TVN Group. Under his reign, he was able to expand distribution of HGTV to Europe. HGTV is also doing pretty good, and it's still the best thing to watch if you're in the waiting room waiting for your doctor. Stuart Snyder, from what I have found, has left the television game and is currently producing a stage show based off The Exorcist. The show opened in Birmingham and was slated to come out on Broadway in 2018, but as of 2019, this is yet to happen. Updates for this are though, so I'll keep you informed on my Twitter if I hear anything about it. Side note, Stuart also owns a restaurant called Bill's Lobster Pier in Maine. So, there's that. In the end, Cartoon Network has had a lot of ups and downs during its time, but without a doubt, this is perhaps the worst mess up to ever come from them. Nothing of positive value can be found here, and in a way, it serves as a reminder to Cartoon Network to stick with one thing, making cartoons. Was Stuart Snyder at fault for green eyeing this? Yes. Was he the reason the channel became a watchable at times? Yes. Is this the worst thing ever? Oh, absolutely. But you can't deny Stu at least tried something new, and sure it failed, but it was worth a shot. And now that this happened, it can be safe to say Cartoon Network would distance themselves from this and not try it again. Plus, you can't deny he did greenlight the revival period for the channel, which in turn is giving us more and more amazing shows that are inspiring the next generation of storytellers. And in turn, it's putting Cartoon Network back into place it was before the Boston incident. Sure, the era before the Boston incident is gone, but a whole new era is currently being created in the process. Does that mean he gets a pass? Not necessarily. He still tried to put the network somewhere in the bong, and the backlash from fans certainly proved that point. At most, I hope he understands why all this didn't work. Today, Cartoon Network is still a thriving company experimenting with new shows and breaking taboos of the past and growing for the future. All this is great, but we must remind ourselves of the times before, and whether we want to or not. We must accept the fact that Cartoon Network would be a very different place if CN Row kept going for longer than it did. 8 o'clock, Wednesday nights, CN Real on Cartoon Network!